I don't normally do second looks at applications, but GitHub CLI has had so many changes since I last looked at it, and it's addressed so many of the problems I originally had with it, that I feel like it'd be kind of unfair not to do so with how popular that video got. So when I first looked at it, I believe it was in version 0.7 of the beta, and as of right now, it is... What is it? Version 1.4.0. And basically every two weeks, it's getting a new update. Sometimes it's a minor update, but at least like every you know, one month, every two months, it's getting a major, major update. What GitHub CLI is, is basically an addition along with Git. So Git allows you to do all your Git management, and then GitHub CLI allows you to do all your GitHub management. So managing things like creating issues, pull requests, releases, gists, all of that stuff. But back during the beta, a lot of that stuff was either missing or missing a lot of things that really needed to be there. Not to say that it's perfect now, but it is much better than it was. So one of the first things you'll probably notice is if you run GH help, the documentation is basically the same. There's not really been any major changes here. Obviously, it has been reformatted a bit, which is a bit nicer. And also, it has some extra commands in here. It has been formatted more like a man page, but it's still not a man page. However, there is actually a man page on the Linux version. So if we run man gh, as we'll notice, we have a man page. It's not great. It needs a lot of work. But if we go, say, to, I don't know, man gh-alias, as we'll see, there is the structure for a man page here. I don't think that anyone is maintaining it right now because this hasn't been updated for quite a while except for, like, changing the date. So hopefully someone who actually knows how to work with man pages actually comes along to maintain it. If I use this application frequently, I would probably do that myself. Okay, so now we're just in a test repo that I have. There's nothing too special in it. Basically, it exists for doing videos like this. So the first thing we have that is absolutely massive, which I wish was here from the start, is ghpr create and gh issue create. So this will actually let us create issues and pull requests. Now I only have one branch in this repo, so let's just go and do an issue instead. So gh issue create, and we run that. It's going to create a new issue. It's going to prompt us for a title. Let's just say... This is a new issue. It's going to prompt us for a body. If we want to open it up inside of our editor, we can just go and press E. Let's go and do that. And because this is just going up to GitHub, it's going to need to be in Markdown. Now, some of the other third-party applications for working with GitHub do actually come with templates for this. So it would be nice to have a bit of a template for this one as well, but it's not really that big of a deal. Let's just say uh, title uh, sub... Oh. Wrong one, sub, heading, and list, another list item, and another list item, sure. And go and save this. And then it's gonna prompt us to actually add some metadata. And this part is fairly new as well. So we can actually go and add things like a reviewer. We can change the base branch, we can change the head branch. Or if we wanted to, we can go and submit it or just go and edit in our browser. And that honestly might be easier for some things because there is still some stuff that is missing. So for any stuff that is missing like that, like say being able to attach videos and things like that, I didn't know this was actually here. It might be better to do it from the browser instead. And let's just go and submit that new issue. And I believe if you do gh issue list was the command that would actually list out all of the issues and as we can see that one is there now that command was there earlier though we just couldn't create them now we don't just have to create the issue in an interactive mode so let's just go and run gh issue create and then help this is actually something i really like if you stick help on the end of any command it will list out all of the options for that specific command so we can actually go and specify all of those values with flags instead so we can set the body we can set the assignee project title so on and so forth so if you prefer to do it like this because maybe you want to automate something you have a script that automatically makes these issues doing it like this might be a bit easier and over on the pr side for create we have basically the same stuff so gh pr create and then help. Technically help isn't actually an argument we can use here, but it does bring up the help anyway, and I feel like it probably should be there as an argument. So this has basically the same options with a couple of ones that are specific to working with a pull request, but PRs actually have a couple of other upgrades as well. So if we just go ghpr help, as we'll notice, there's a couple of extra subcommands. This one actually does have dash dash help. 
Maybe I should just run that instead, but help also works. So we can also do PR diff, and this will actually let us check the contents of a pull request. We can do PR review, and this will actually let us review the contents, PR merge to actually merge the pull request into the repo and PR ready to mark the draft as ready to merge. So you can basically do all your pull request management directly from your terminal, which is really awesome because if you're already working with Git, you're already working from your terminal anyway, and this basically gives you more power in that respect. Now it's not perfect just yet. There is still one very important thing missing. So if we go and run GH issue or GHPR, View, and then the ID of the thing we want to view. So in this case, let's do one dash dash comments. This will list out all of the existing comments. But there's no way to actually go and reply to those comments, at least at this point. Right now, if you want to reply to the comments, you actually have to go to the thing in your web browser and then reply from there. It's not a major deal, but I would like to see it so I could actually do all of that stuff directly from my terminal. Another thing that was completely missing from last time, which I absolutely love that is here now, is release management. So if we go and run gh release and then help, as we will see, we have create, delete, download, list, upload, and view. And all of these are fairly self-explanatory. So let's actually go and, I don't know, make a new release. So gh release and then create, and we have to give it a tag name. So let's just call it, I don't know, R1, and then we can go and specify some other things like the title and things like that. So let's just create it like this, and it's going to prompt us for a title. Let's just say title, and want to set our release notes, write my own, leave it blank. Let's just leave it blank. And is this a pre release? Let's just say no, it's not a pre release, and then publish the release. And then give it a second. Now that release has been made. So if we go over to the repo again, the actual repo, not my profile, uh, this one here. As we will see, we now have this one release. We can also go and manage our GitHub secrets. So these are bits of private information that you want to be associated with the repo that you don't want to be publicly shown to anyone who's just looking at it. So let's say that you have a file that's supposed to have an API key in it. Now, you probably don't want the API key to be shown to anyone just looking at the repo. So one thing you can do with that API key is save it as a GitHub secret, then everyone who actually has extended access to the repo can actually see that key. So let's go and run gh secret and then a help. And as we can see, we can do list, remove, and set. Fairly self-explanatory what these do. Let's go and run gh secret and then set. And we need to pass in a secret name for this. So let's say, we'll call it secret name. And this is supposed to read in from standard in, but it doesn't seem to actually be doing so. It just fails. So Instead of doing that, just pass in the dash dash body argument or dash B, and then you can go and set the contents of the secret. So let's just say API underscore key and give that a second. It's going to set that secret. If we do GH secret and then list, we now have that secret in there. The only thing I would say is missing from this is being able to actually view the secret, which is probably fairly important. Previously, managing your account inside of GH was really, really annoying. But now that GitHub has fully migrated over to OAuth, it is so much smoother inside of GH. So if we just go and run GH auth and then help, we can see we can do login, logout, refresh, and status. So let's just go and log out. And yes, I want to log out. There we go. It's logged out of my account. So let's go and run GH auth, and it should prompt us. So let's go and run G So let's go and run GH or login and it's going to prompt us to actually log into either github.com or the GitHub Enterprise server. In this case, I'm just going to do github.com and let's go and log in with a web browser. So it's going to give you a code that you have to put in and then it's going to prompt you to open up your browser. It's going to then want you to actually put that code in. And then once you've gone and done that, just keep going through the prompts it gives you give it the authorization to access your GitHub, and then it's going to ask you to actually put in your GitHub password if you haven't already authorized it before. In my case, I already have. So now that that's done, we should be able to go back here. It's going to say authentication complete. It's going to prompt you for the Git protocol you want to use. In this case, I'm just going to use HTTPS. If you want to use SSH, go through the SSH prompt, and there we go. Now we're done.
Like with Git, GH now has a way to do aliases. So obviously, because this is a terminal program, we could always go and do so with our shell. But the way that Git does it is a little bit different. So you run Git and then the alias, rather than a shell alias, which is just the alias name. So whether you prefer doing that or not is going to be up to you. Personally, for things that are specifically associated with Git, I do actually like having them as Git aliases. So GH aliases set and then CO, and let's just set it to PR checkout. And if we just go and run GHCO, that's now going to run that command. Another thing we sort of now have is gist management. So a gist is basically, think of it like a miniature Git repo. Typically you wouldn't use it for anything major, but if you want to share like a single file or something like that, a gist might make a little bit more sense. So let's go and run gh gist and then help. That will list out all of the commands. We have create, delete, edit, list, and view. But I haven't actually managed to get the create command to actually work. So let's go and run gh gist and then create. And it requires us to pass in a file name. And if it doesn't have a file name, it seems like it's going to be trying to get it from standard in. Let's go and pass in a file name. So dash dash file name. Let's just pass in file one and try to run it. And it complains that there's no file names and nothing on standard in. I've tried this a bunch of different ways and every single time it fails. And even trying to run this with the dash W option to open it up in your web browser doesn't actually go and do anything. So I'm not too sure what the problem is there. It did seem like the standard in problem was a issue with other parts of the application as well. So that might just be a overall issue. And the last thing we have is GitHub API access. This is something I could spend an entire video talking about by itself. But one thing we can go and do is run this command right here. So GH API repo slash the owner of the repo slash the name of the repo slash releases. And this will list out all of the information about the releases for that repo. And because we have access to the API, we also have access to the GraphQL API as well. So this one right here, this is going to list out all of the tags for the last three releases. So as we can see, there we go. Besides the features that are still missing, like managing some of the advanced features of a repo, maybe being able to delete a repo, things like that. Besides things like that, and the little bugs that are there, this is still so much better than it was before. I would say that I really recommend using it at this point. And you know what else I recommend? Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available, like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. So that's going to be pretty much everything for me then. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go support, I work them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, Libra pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got this channel available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. If you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me and... I'm out.